Hello everyone, this is Diane Bridges of The Body House, and I wanted to bring something to your attention today that I've noticed happening in the cannabis industry. This is now late 2019, and it looks like we have now got three cannabis companies that have gone global. All three of them are Canadian-based, although they have a lot of Americans attached to them. And every other company that was in the cannabis space over the last 10 years has now fallen way, way back. So the entire industry is now being funneled into these three companies. They're going global and they have satellite locations all over the world. Now, I think this is significant because it just seems that every industry anywhere around the world gets funneled into the hands of just a few. Just a few companies, just a few executives at the top making the decisions. And I think it's important to point that out because I do not see anybody really saying this when they discuss the cannabis markets. They talk about how much money you can make from the stocks and whatnot, but they don't talk about the dynamics of what's happening. And I think it's somewhat dangerous. So let's look at the three large companies that are dominating the market. We've got Canopy Growth, Tilray, very new, a very new one, and Aurora Cannabis. Now, Canopy Growth was started in 2015 by a couple of guys. They found some backing and took their company uh, international in 2015, and they quickly grew from there. Canopy growth is now worth over nine billion dollars and that's from several hundred million in 2015 so that is massive growth. And then we have Aurora Cannabis which is worth five billion dollars. They are mostly a medical marijuana company and they seem to be buying up a lot of smaller cannabis companies as many of these other larger ones are doing. They've also procured the consultation services of Nelson Peltz. So Nelson Peltz formed a hedge fund with a couple of partners in 2005, Tryon Partners. He is also a former executive at a lot of CPG companies. CPG is consumer packaged goods. So basically anything that you see on a shelf anywhere to buy is a CPG or consumer packaged good uh, product. Uh, In his bio it says he served as the director of the Heinz company from 2006 to 2013. Ingersoll Rand from 2012 to 2014. He's a busy guy. He's also been a director on the board of the Procter & Gamble Company, the Cisco Corporation, and the Madison Square Garden Company. So this guy has a lot of experience in consumer packaged goods and the marketing of them. And he is now a consultant of Aurora Cannabis. They have, as part of their deal, they have given him large shares of the company. Uh, And now on to Tilray. Tilray is also a Canadian-based company, and according to 247wallstreet.com, this company did not even exist in 2017, (laughs) so it's uh, barely a year and a half old. Yet, when you land on their website, they have a large management team, a lot of female faces, which is nice to see. So far, most of these large companies The faces have been almost exclusively male and white, but they have more diversity over here at Tilray. Their international advisory board, they actually have several boards, but when you look at the international advisory board, one of the first people that you see is Governor Howard Dean. Isn't that interesting? He's a former DNC chair and a six-term governor of Vermont. He's also a doctor, and you might remember him from a presidential run uh, a number of years ago. Uh, Another person on this list that you'll recognize is Michael Steele. Michael Steele is on a lot of political talk shows. 
He was elected Lieutenant Governor of Maryland in 2003 and was the first African American to be elected to that position. Broke some barriers there and then he went on to become the chair of the Republican National Committee. So I'm guessing if these two gentlemen are part of Tilray, there's got to be some huge money behind it. So of this list and now be worth oh, over six and a half billion dollars. It's staggering that kind of growth. A lot of it has to do with the fact that they are now taking over the world. These three companies are taking over the world in cannabis. They have satellite locations everywhere. In Europe, in Australia, in Africa, in Canada, the US and Mexico. Keep in mind that every small business that you buy a cannabis product from will have their product coming from these three companies. This, of course, is the legal part of the industry. But this is what's happening, and I don't know what to do about it, but I thought that we needed to at least acknowledge it and see what's happening, because I don't see anybody else doing that. They're talking about the stocks and how much money you can make from it. But no one is really saying that the entire industry is being amalgamated into just the hands of a few. And most of them are men. And most of them are white men. I'm sorry, I say that as a white woman. I, I d <laughs> I'm not trying to disparage white men, but there does seem to be a deep common theme here uh, that I wanted to make sure that uh, I put out there for consideration. So there it is. Thank you for listening. And have a very sensual day. <laughs>